king has come. The king is here. Listen, I'm done, but the word worship in its transliteration, both from the Hebrew and the Greek, means the worth of a ship. The symbolism in that is when those who were waiting for a shipment of something precious, something important. Because the only way of delivery in that day was by ship. They didn't have FedEx, UPS, they didn't have the postal service. And when they would stand on the shore and they would see the ship that was coming, whether the cargo was a loved one that was coming from afar off, whether it was precious spices, whether it was a package from some loved one, they knew that the ship carried what was important to them. So they got excited as the ship was coming. Our worship is based upon the worth of the one that's coming. What does he bring with him? He brings healing. He brings deliverance. Come on, somebody. He brings the answers to our problems. And if the UPS man or the FedEx man was coming to your house tomorrow and he had a package that contained the solution to every problem that you had, you'd be sitting there waiting for the package. You wouldn't go to work. Y'all ain't going to help me. You'd be watching every time a FedEx truck rode by if you knew FedEx was delivering healing to your sick body, you'd be standing there waiting. You'd be calling FedEx. I, I, I was supposed to get a package at 2. It's 201. It ain't here yet. You'd be anticipating what was coming, what was going to be delivered, and you'd be excited when it got there. You couldn't hardly wait to get the box open. That ought to be our response to the presence of the divine. That when God shows up, we ought to be so excited that he's here. That he's here with everything that he has to offer us. That nobody should ever have to pump us, to pry us, or tell us, come on, why don't y'all give him some praise? Come on, why don't y'all worship him? Come on, he's worthy. Come on, he done done something for somebody. Our response should be immediate that the divine has come into the presence of my carnality. And I ought to be so happy that he thought enough of me to show up in my messed up situation. That despite how bad I have disappointed him, in spite of how I carry on every day, in spite of the fact that I am not worthy of his blessing, I am not worthy of his deliverance, he shows up with it in his hand anyway. We ought to be so humbled by the fact that you would show up despite what I've been. That it ought to bring us down on our knees like the woman that came in to see Jesus as she broke down and just began to cry at the fact that I have been graced with the opportunity to be in the presence of the divine. And I wonder if there's somebody in here today that is just happy that despite everything that I've 
done everything I've been through. How often I've disappointed you, Lord. I'm just happy that I have the privilege to, to still be in your presence. That you still speak to me. You still walk with me. You still talk with me. You still tell me that I am your own. That despite everything that I've done to disappoint you, you still love me. The Lord, I don't care what anybody else says. I don't care what anybody else thinks. I, I'm here to worship you. I'm here to be in your presence. I'm willing to break my alabaster box. I'm willing to shed my tears. I'm willing to give you the glory. Lord, when I knew to do right and I still did wrong, you still blessed me. You still made a way for me. And the Lord wants to know today, is there somebody that will join this woman at the feet of Jesus? Is there somebody who's willing to humble themselves to the point that I will join this woman at the feet of Jesus. I don't care who's looking. I don't care who, 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 who thinks what. Lord, here am I. Here am I, Lord. Here am I, Lord. Here am I, Lord. I want to break my alabaster box before you. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Break your box before him. Pour out your oil.